Let's sing it together. Cause I once was lost, but now I'm found, yeah. Cause your grace released a mighty sound that drew me back to your house. Oh, this pride and gold is home now. Sing it again, come on. Yeah, I once was lost, but now I found your grace. It's your grace released the mighty sun that drew me back to your house. Oh, this pride and gold is home now. This prodigal, oh, this prodigal is home now. This is our story. This child is home. And I celebrate my freedom. This child is home. And I share with me your kingdom. This prodigal is home now. Because of you, yeah. This pride and gold is on now Cause I once was dead but now I lie He ran to me arms open wide Yes he did A worthy servant redefined And all that is yours now Well, good morning, good morning, and good morning. Hello, Harborside. Welcome. You just saw Prodigal, one of our songs we released on YouTube. You can watch more worship videos. Worship with us throughout the week. Just go over to Harborside Music. It's a channel on YouTube. You can fill your home with worship and praise. That's right. Right now, people are tuning in from all over the world. So why don't you go ahead in the live chat, go ahead and say where you're watching from. Give some hellos, some high fives, and maybe some of you don't know how to join the live chat. Andrew, why don't you let them know how to join in the live chat? Sure. If you're on your phone, go ahead, open your phone, go to the premiering video. There's a live chat button. All you're going to do is hit that button. You can join the chat as well as on the computer on the right hand side. There should, you should see the feed it's just going off right now. But we're not alone tonight, are we? No, we are not alone. This morning we are joined by people and they're smiling at me. Let's go ahead and why don't you guys wave to all the people that are watching online? Hey, what's up? Hey, guys, these are our staff, our leaders, our elders, their families. We've even got some interns in the house. Interns, where you at? Whoop, whoop, whoop. That's right. Well, these people are here. I am so proud. They are here. And earlier this week, they spent some time going through our entire church, preparing the church spiritually, praying that the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, would, in, would invade every space in our church. But they're also here because we've got an announcement. Yeah, we got one exciting announcement this morning. That's right. Next week, Father's Day. The Father's Day, we will be reopening our building with how many services? Seven services. Seven services. That's right. So let's count them out. Right here in the NPR, this auditorium, we're going to be meeting at 8.30, 10 a.m., and 11.30 a.m. And also, we're going to be meeting in... 8.30, 10 a.m., 11.30 a.m. in the Harborside Chapel. Wow, that's right. So we've got three here and three here. We got one more. Where's the next one? We've got one more service. 
one more service. Many of you have asked, hey, are you guys gonna keep your online services? Well, the answer is absolutely we are. Yes, we are keeping our online service. We are launching our online service at 5 p.m. on Sunday. So, three in-person services in the NPR, three in-person services in the Harborside Chapel, and one online experience. Maybe you're not quite ready to come back. Maybe it's gonna work better with your schedule, but we're so excited. 5 p.m. online, we will have a service just for you. We're so happy you joined us this morning. And we just wanna invite you right now, if you haven't already, go ahead and get your supplies ready. If you have communion, grab it, grab your kids, grab your wife, get them on the couch, get everyone around the TV or the computer, and let's worship this morning. There's some student resources, there's kids resources. And also, if you're a musician, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, it's okay. We have worship charts available for you. So we want you to be the worship leaders, outreach leaders, and the youth ministers of your home. So why don't you go ahead and get that on the app. You can find all that you need there. Awesome. So, hey, right now in the chat, let us know. Where are you watching from? Maybe you're just joining us. We just want to say hello and good morning. Thank you for tuning into our service. Where are you watching from? Clearwater? Are you up in Newport, Ritchie? I think we've got some people from all over the world. My family's watching from Georgia. We've got some other family in New York watching. Just say hello. We're a very friendly, happy, high fivey, huggy church. Online, we can really just put emojis. So go ahead and put as many as emojis as you possibly can. And how about one more time, if you're just tuning in, we've got some friends in the house with us. So one more time, the people in here, why don't you wave to everybody tuning in in the chat? Hello, hello. This is our staff, our elders, our interns. Just wanted to say hello to you as you're joining us this morning. Again, if you're just joining this morning, we have three services in the NPR next week, and we have three services where, Amos? In the Harborside Chapel. Three in the NPR, three in the Harborside Chapel, all six of those in the morning, 8.30, 10, 11.30. And then at night, 5 p.m., we will have an online service. So that's just for you. Maybe it works better with your schedule. Maybe you're not quite ready to come back. Well, this is exciting news. Many of you have asked if we would continue this. And yes, we are continuing our online service 5 p.m. next Sunday. We're so proud of all of the staff that have worked so hard to get this building ready, but not just physically ready, they've been preparing this building spiritually. And so this week, we've been able to go around all the campus of Harborside, and we've been able to pray for this church and prepare it spiritually. And so we have a minute video. We want you to tune in for the next minute. Go ahead and watch this video. There is no limitations when you are in the room, King Jesus. And we take responsibility off of ourselves of what we can try and accomplish. And Lord, we simply want to welcome you here in the room. We're going to talk about what God has done because God, you're about to do amazing things in lives in this space. I praise your name for this area of worship and praise and testimony. Oh God, let this place be a place filled with testimony because you said they will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And so God, I pray that this space will be a space filled with testimony. May your name be written on the walls. May your spirit be welcomed, God, in every corner. We don't want distractions with, associated with coronavirus to prevent them from being here to celebrate your day. so cool and it's such an important thing to do to prepare this place spiritually so we just want you to know we're thinking about you you at home we're thinking about you and we're preparing this place we're asking the holy spirit to come here right now so that you can come in and receive from the lord but also that you can be a minister unto the lord amen hey guys we're gonna get started in about five minutes or so go ahead and grab your supplies We've got a full service today. So get your communion supplies, get your journals, get your Bibles, grab your kids too. Grab your kids in the room, get your wife, don't forget her, get your husband, don't forget him. Why don't you all join together as we get ready for service? Hey, thank you for making this possible. I can truly tell you this has been an amazing season just to step back and reevaluate, hey God, 
you are welcome. You are welcome in my heart, not just in the church, but even in our own homes. And so we've been able to win at home. We've done so many cool things over this season, but we just want to thank you for making this possible as a church. That's right. And many of you have continued your giving online. Thank you so much for doing that. You're helping us charge forward. You're helping us charge forward as a church. You see, we may be reopening our building next week, but we've never been closed. We've been charging forward and your giving has allowed us to do that. So you've been giving online, which is great and you can continue to do so. There's a link coming into the chat right now. Also, many of you have decided to mail in your gift and you can continue to do that too. You can do that by mailing in your gift to 2200, that's 2200 Marshall Street in Safety Harbor, Florida. Hey, if you're just tuning in right now, we wanna give you an update next week. Really exciting. We are opening in person seven services. One will be online premiering on YouTube at 5 p.m. Tell us the three here and three, where else? In the chapel. In the That's chapel. right. Seven experiences. Six of them are happening in the, in the morning. So 8.30, 10, and 11.30 right here in the NPR. At the same time, 8.30, 10, and 11.30 in the chapel. There's gonna be teaching pastors and worship. It's a full experience happening simultaneous, simultaneously. We won't be at full capacity in either of the buildings, but you can also tune in at 5 p.m. That's the seventh service of the day. You can tune in at 5 p.m. online. Maybe you're not quite ready to come back yet. Maybe this actually works better for your schedule. Well, we want you to know we are continuing our online service, not just next week, but we're going to keep this thing going. So you can tune in at 5 p.m. online. And for some of us that are watching, you're actually watching from all over the world. It's been so cool to connect with you over the past few months. So we just are so grateful that we get to continue doing this. It's, it's really an amazing thing. Hey, we miss you. We really miss you. We're so excited to see you. In fact, we can't do this normally, but if everyone could in the room, why don't you turn around, look at the camera and say, we miss you. We really miss you. <laughs> I thought that was cool. Yeah, that was that was really, really cool. <laughs> Guys, once again, you can find all the information about what's happening in our church by following us on Facebook, on Instagram, uh, making sure your notifications are turned on on the app as well too. Even on your email list, many of you are saying, hey, I'm not getting the emails. Check the junk mail. I don't know why they turn, they send the church news to the junk mail, but it's good news. <laughs> so make sure that Harborside is not in the junk mail. We're gonna be communicating with you all week leading up to the Father's Day next Sunday. Service is gonna begin in about two minutes. Last week, we heard an incredible sermon about how we get to listen to the capital T teacher. And so this has been so important to my life, getting to listen to the capital T teacher. Kurt tells me all the time, I'm not the capital T teacher. And I love that. And I'm not the capital T teacher. You're not the capital T teacher. That's right. Jesus, the fullness, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit is the capital T teacher. Love that. So many of you have connected every single morning. I just wanna let you know that any one of the services that we've been doing online are still available online. So if there was a service that you loved or enjoyed, you can actually go back on our YouTube channel, share that with a friend, share that with a family member, share that with someone who needs the good news of what God wants to do in their life. Service will begin in about a minute or so. And right before service, we're actually gonna show you a video. My wife actually is doing a tour of the church building. She's this awesome. is some, some of the, I would say the same. Yeah. I would say that too. <laughs> some of the practical things we're doing to prepare the building for you. So why don't you go ahead and pray us into service and then you'll get to watch this video before worship. I absolutely would love to. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the fullness, the fullness that is available to us. We thank you that you want us to experience and know the Father, you, the Father, more. We thank you that you want us to know Jesus more. We thank you that you want us to know the Spirit more. So God, right now our building may not be at full capacity, and that may be the case for the next few weeks. But Lord, we're going to be overflowing with your presence, no matter what. Whether it's here in this room in the NPR, whether it's in the Harborside Chapel, whether it's in every home tuning in in Pinellas County in Florida, really all over the world, we invite the fullness of your presence here today. Check out this video. 
Hello and welcome to Harborside. I am so excited to take you on a tour of our building. We are gearing up and getting ready to reopen the doors on June 21st. We're calling this Sunday the Father's Day. We're going to have services here on campus at 8.30, 10, and 11.30 a.m. And at 5 p.m., we are going to live premiere our online service. I cannot wait to see you guys then. So let's get started on our tour. As you walk in the doors, you're going to be greeted with some bright smiles. Our greeters are going to have on white gloves and they are ready to assist you in whatever way possible. Welcome to our Surfside Kids environment. Parents, we want to make this check-in process as easy and as efficient as the drive through at Chick-fil-A is. So when you walk in, we are going to have volunteers stationed with a portable check-in. There you will have a hands-free check-in experience. You can then walk your kids to their classrooms where they will learn their Bible story for the day and they will worship with their class. Kylie, are you ready? I'm so excited for June 21st! Middle school parents, you are going to have a similar check-in process to what's happening downstairs with Surfside Kids. Steven, this room is so empty and open. What's going to be going on June 21st? We're going to have to be here to find out. Guys, the best news yet is that on June 21st, we are going to have free hot coffee for all of our services. Could I get one hot coffee, please? Thank you, Kurt. Let's head into the auditorium to see what's happening in there. Hey, that's what's going on in here! Well, we've got communion and we've got offering. Hey, notice we've got the communion cups socially distanced about six inches apart. Huh? How about that? You pick up your communion right here and you can drop your offering bang, or you can give online or mail it in. You can still do that. As you can see, our staff has been working so hard to physically get the building ready for when we all come back again on June 25th. They've also spiritually been preparing this place. Praying, pressing in to what the Lord has for us. So we can't wait to see you June 21st, the Father's Day. Good morning. It's so good to be here with you all. And I want to invite those in the audience here to stand. Uh, if you're in your living room, I just want to invite you this morning to kind of get yourself in a position ready to run after God together. And that's what we want to do here today. And so we're so excited for this opportunity to come together. This is really our first time uh, worshiping with the body. And so we're here today to prepare this room. And as you heard earlier, we've been walking around this whole campus uh, this week praying and preparing as you saw this video of how we're preparing it to be a safe environment. We're also preparing this place to be a place for you to come and meet with the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And so tonight is uh, this morning as we come and we worship, I just wanna invite you to begin to prepare your hearts. So I wanna invite you just to close your eyes uh, this morning as we're in this place. And uh, there's something that that I can't pray for you. You have to pray for yourself. And this morning, I wanna welcome uh, all of you and invite all of you watching in this room to begin to welcome God uh, in this place. He is here, but it's so important that we become aware of his nearness. If you're in your living room right now, just close your eyes and open your hands up and say, God, I just welcome you here in this place. I can't pray this prayer for you. It's something that you have to do. Say, God, I welcome you here. Make me aware of your presence today. In your living room, in this room this morning, I just next want you to invite God, his, his power, his wonder-working power that we sing about to come and meet with you uh, in this place. We need you, Father. So just begin to, to, to pour your heart out to him. I can't pray this prayer for you. You, you ask him, say, God, I, I want you to come and move and work in my heart and my life today. And in your living room, lastly, before we begin to worship, 
I just want you to continue to have your eyes closed and, and in this moment, just remember this story of the prodigal son and how we were once far away. We were in the wrong things. We were taking part in things that we thought would bring us life, but then God took our, our eyes off the things of this world and fixed them upon his son, his son, Jesus. And he has redeemed us. He has called us by name. He's put the robe on us. He's invited us to the banquet table. And Jesus is inviting us to feast. And so in your living room this morning, I just want you to start thanking Jesus. In this room this morning, just start to thank Jesus for all that he's done, how he's forgiven you, how he's been the hope of your life, how he's lead, led you, how he's guided you. Just begin to pour out your heart and thank Jesus for who he is, honor his name, honor who he is. We come and we honor you this morning, Lord. Lord, our worship, Lord, let it be an offering, let it be a beautiful, praise that comes before you lord we're so grateful for you we thank you for your hope lord that there's nothing else in this world like you and so lord we just give you all that we are we worship you today in jesus name let's worship him this morning and all hail king jesus all right now sing there was a moment when the lights went out when death had claimed its victory the king of love had given up his life the darkest day in history oh lord there on the cross they made for sinners Every curse, yeah, for every curse His blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known Thank you, Lord For the earth began to shake the veil was torn. What sacrifice was made as the heaven rolled? Oh, help Jesus. Oh, help the Lord of Praise His name, oh hell, 
bow before the King. We humbly bow, Jesus. Humbly bow before the Lord. Let every tongue confess the Lord. Longing 
service so get that communion in first Corinthians it says you ought to examine yourself before you eat of the bread and before you drink of the cup so I think we need to posture ourselves in a moment of confession you can stand you can sit you can kneel you can do whatever you need to do to posture your heart before the Lord Tell him you're sorry. Tell him you're sorry for the the moments of disobedience or the moments where you worshiped idols or the moments where you made it all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things that I've made it because it's all about you. It's all about you, God. Take a moment, confess your sins, but don't stay there for too long. I want you to go ahead and repent. And that means to literally turn around and go the opposite direction. Turn around and go back to him. The word says his kindness leads us to repentance. Because on the other side of confession is always forgiveness. Always, always. It's what he died for. So take that moment and I'll come back. We'll take the elements together as a big family.
first examining ourselves. So Lord, we come to you and we say thank you for your blood that covers that covers our sin, that covers our our mess, that covers everything. Thank you Lord that you give us a new heart and you give us a new mind that you have a fountain of forgiveness just waiting for us. So we come today and we drink of that fountain. We remember your blood. We remember the cross. We take the elements. We take the, the bread and we take the juice. And we remember you, Jesus. chorus one more time together. I'm coming back. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it, but it's all about it's all about you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to invite you guys to stand with us. We're going to do one more song this morning. When we were Before we started, we got to sing this song together, and it's really our, our heart cry. God, would our lives be an offering to you? This is all for you, Lord. I'll sing in the dawn. In the dawn I will rise and call on your name, Jesus. Stepping on to the altar, I'm bringing my Every piece of my heart You're refining with your flame In the dawn I will rise God, And I'll call on your name Let's sing this together Let my life be So let my life be an offering To you, Jesus Let my life be In the night, in the 
night I will sing and call on you. Jesus, I will rest. I will rest on the altar, still bringing my head. Every piece of my heart, you're refining with your friend. so much God for this service for this first time where there's people here <laughs> Lord and we come and all across every living room and in this room today Lord we're here to give you our lives we'll give you our hearts this morning we we'll give you our desires we we'll give you our dreams Lord, we give you the things that we want to control, the areas of our life where we haven't fully allowed you to be, Lord. We lay on the altar. And Lord, we ask that your fire would consume that. And Lord, that this would be a pleasing offering of worship to you today. 
Let's sing this together one more time, all together. Cause my life is an offering to you, Jesus. And my life is an offering to you, Lord. I'm not walking away, you can have everything. God, I'm your living sacrifice. My life is an offering of praise Cause you can have it all Let's give the Lord a shout of praise this morning Thank you guys so much for joining us in worship This is exciting, we're so excited to be with you guys here next week Let's get ready to hear the word well, good morning again. We're so glad you're here watching us. And um, for all of you guys that are here, I cannot tell you how good it is to see you and to be with you. And I had something I was gonna say a minute ago, but when we started that first song, All Hail King Jesus, I, I, there was electricity in the room. There's a bolt of Holy Spirit power that just shot in this room. And it caught me by surprise. I don't know if it caught you by surprise. I'm back there with Pastor Tom Goodlett and Lisa Gilstrap, our director of children's ministry. We're all back there in tears. We have missed being with you. There's something about the body. There's something about the body of Christ being together, worshiping together. And what an honor this is tonight, this morning for us to be here with you. Because what we're gonna do all day long today is we're gonna worship our King. We're gonna worship our Lord. And so, what we wanna say this morning to you is, we love you and we miss you so much. And next Sunday morning, we're gonna open up also with children and middle schoolers. And we're stoked to have our kids and our teens here in the facility with us. And we can't wait to see these kids. And all week long, we're gonna tell you how we're gonna make this safe and not every room will be full and, and this worship room will be half capacity, the wedding chapel will be half capacity and all the different classrooms will be half capacity. We'll tell you all about that, but we can't wait to be with you on the Father's Day. But what's really exciting is this morning's message um, has been burning in my heart for about 10 years. And it's a message that I really have struggled with communicating. You know, some people have to have all the lights between New York and San Francisco green before they can start the car. You ever heard that expression before? They wait for everything is ready. Now, if you're doing brain surgery, that's probably a great idea. But this is a message that I don't have fully baked yet, but it is a message that we're gonna talk about this morning because it is, it benefits all of us. This morning, if we can grasp this message, we will all be better and better off. And this is a message that honors our Heavenly Father. And so it's a topic that quite frankly, I've never talked about before. And I'm a little bit embarrassed about that, but I'll get over it, okay? And I, I want us to approach this. And so there's a little bit of fear in a topic that we've never talked about before. And let's just kind of start right there with fears. There's a lot of fear in the world today, um, but on a lighter note, do you guys have any like really kooky, weird fears? Any of you like have some crazy fears? Joy, you got any fears? You don't have any fears, do you? Um, yes, lots. <laughs> what are you afraid okay, of? Well, I'm most afraid of things that jump on me, like grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. <laughs> I know, it's weird. Any reptiles are not okay. I'm definitely a woman like Eve. I don't want to see a snake. Okay, so we probably shouldn't throw grasshoppers on her. That probably wouldn't be too cool. All right, that wouldn't be good. Really, grasshoppers. I know it's kind of weird, but it's just, they could I mean, jump on you when you sense. go to capture them, you know? Uh, anybody else afraid of grasshoppers? Really? Jeannie, Jeannie. That, that fits, Jeannie. That totally fits, all right? How about anybody else? Anybody else got any fears? You got, Hans, um, you don't have any fears. I mean, honestly, I don't really have many fears, but... <laughs> Thinking about it, I guess to be completely honest, I'm sometimes fearful that God's plan for my life will be passed on to the next person mm. if I don't keep it all together. Mm. I think so. I think that was deep right there, right? Uh, that, that's Hans. Deep, that's Hans. He's always he's always going deep. 
Uh, I'm not that just deep. Are you? I just, all right. You guys have any fears? Have yeah, any? I'm afraid of Hans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be too. Oh my gosh. So um, I actually had a dream um, Thursday morning I haven't told you about, and it was with armadillos. And I had armadillos crawling all over me that morning. And what you have to know is the last year, we've had three different armadillos in the back of our yard, lawn, and the pest control guys go to our church and they've been awesome. And so two weeks ago, two months ago, and about eight months ago, they set up a trap, got one, got two, got three. And don't worry, they're not, they don't kill them. They take them, they set them loose somewhere they're, and they're all safe. So don't worry about that. But I came home um, Tuesday night, I think it was. And Danita said to me, she said, hey, I heard something today in the backyard. I said, well, great. You know, I'm thinking, what you hear? She said, well, I, and I said, you didn't. You did, we don't have armadillos again. She said, not one, not two, not three. We have four armadillos now in our backyard. And I, and I said, I said, and the pest control guys go to our church. And she said, she said, I'm not calling Charlie. I said, I'm not calling Charlie either. I haven't got the heart. You don't have the heart. So this is kind of the way we're telling Charlie right now. Charlie's <laughs> going to find out. We have four armadillos. Charlie, we got yeah. four armadillos in the backyard. So I'm just letting you know, because I couldn't tell you that face to face. That is awful, Danita. I wish you hadn't have told me about the armadillos. Well, on a much more serious note, and you went there quick, bro, with de depth. That was good. I'm sorry, I had nothing else. No, that was, that was good. Um, there's a, there is a lot of fear today, and there is a lot of fear in the world. But it hasn't just started in our culture, in our country, in our community. There's been fear all along. There's been problems. The world is a mess. I'm not telling you something that you don't know. You feel it, you sense it, you, se you, you, you observe it. But the world has actually always been a mess. And in the days with John the Baptist and with Jesus, it was an incredible mess because in that time there was oppression, at that time there was poverty, at that time actually the Jewish people were slaves to the Romans. The Romans had come and had invaded Judea and Jerusalem and now they are enslaved. And so Roman soldiers like came into your home and Roman soldiers would come in and they would eat your food. They would sleep in any of your rooms. Roman soldiers would just help themselves. And so you were not free in that time of, in culture. And there's an incredible amount of fears. And so everyone is praying for the Messiah. They knew that a Messiah would come. And so when John the Baptist comes on the scene, they begin to say, well, maybe he's it. He's kind of crazy, but he's you know, talking about a message. It's been 400 years of silence. There'd been 400 years without a prophet. And now John is back. And so they said, are you the Messiah? He said, no. Oh man. Well, are you Elijah? Why'd they ask that? Because they knew that the Elijah had to come before the Messiah. No. Are you the prophet? Meaning, are you Moses? No. Well, then who are you? If you're not the Messiah, if you're not Elijah, if you're not the prophet, who are you? He said, I'm just a voice of one calling in the wilderness. I'm not even worthy to untie the guy's sandals. He is so awesome. He will baptize with the Holy Spirit and with fire. And so they were so excited about a Messiah. And Jesus then... Would you read this for us in, in uh, Matthew chapter 16? Jesus then for us has a revel, he's revealing himself as the Messiah for the very first time to his disciples in Matthew chapter 16. Read 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by man, but by my father in heaven. So Jesus is being revealed to the world by God through Simon Peter. And they are so excited about the Messiah. And it's like they all knew it. They all received it. They all accepted it. Now, here's my question. Why did they expect a Messiah? How did they know that someday a Messiah would come and help them with all their fears and with all their problems and with the mess that was in the world? If you became an Old Testament student, and many of those you all in the room are, we've got leaders in the room tonight, this morning, the leaders are here. 
you would know the prophecies. And so there's some incredible prophecies in Isaiah 53, in Jeremiah, in Ezekiel, in the early parts of Isaiah. And so this morning, what I want to do is I want to camp out on Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 11. And Isaiah chapter 11, it, it tells us how the Spirit of the Lord comes on Jesus and gives him all these incredible gifts, which are all for your benefit. He will transfer all of these unto you if we do something that we're going to talk about this morning that we've never talked about before. So Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 says this. The cutoff stump of Jesse will sprout. Now, Jesse was David's daddy and a fruitful branch will grow from its roots. And this is a messianic prophecy that the Messiah would come from the tribe of Judah through the line of David, and it would come directly now on Jesus of Nazareth. And here's what he says in verse two. Now catch verse two. Isaiah chapter 11, verse two says this. The spirit of Yahweh will rest upon him. And the spirit of extraordinary wisdom will rest upon him. And the spirit of perfect understanding will rest upon him. And the spirit of wise strategy will rest upon him. And the spirit of mighty power will rest upon him. And the spirit of revelation will rest upon him. Uh, here's the one I want to talk about in just a minute. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord will rest upon him. And let's break this down for just a couple minutes this morning, this morning. On Jesus, at his baptism, he gets this incredible gift of the Spirit will rest upon him. And so when the Spirit rests upon Jesus, we are told that the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove and it remained on him. The heavens parted, heaven comes now down to earth. That's why Jesus taught us the Lord's Prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven has a will for you. And then the Father's voice said, this is my boy, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. And so the Father is declaring to the world that my spirit is now dwelling and resting on my son. And so on Jesus, there is now this spirit of incredible Yahweh that came up to rest on him. Then there's the spirit of wisdom that came to rest on him. Now, give me about 10 minutes to unpack this, because all of these are for you. Every one of these are transferable from Jesus to you. But let me get to this first. The spirit of wisdom. So what did they try to do to Jesus? Let's just trap Jesus. Jesus, is it lawful to pay taxes or not? Jesus, we don't believe in the resurrection. The Sadducees, the Pharisees did, but the Sadducees didn't. And so this man, uh, he married a woman and he died and he had seven brothers. And so the woman actually married all seven guys. And so in the resurrection, you know, whose wife will she be? And Jesus knew it was a trap. They asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment? There were 613, 613 commandments. Which is the greatest? They knew they trapped him. And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Every time they tried to trap him, the spirit of wisdom rested upon Jesus. The spirit of perfect understanding rested upon the Savior. Perfect understanding. He knew that the woman at the well could be redeemed. He knew that the woman had five husbands and now she's in a dead-end relationship. He knew that she was worth saving. He knew her. He knew that Simon was judging him. He knew that Zacchaeus was up in that tree, and even though he was isolated from everybody, he knew that Zacchaeus really wanted to have community and to be found. He knew that that woman who had lived a very sinful life, he knew that she would forever praise God and forever be grateful because her sins were many and she had been forgiven much. The spirit of wisdom, the spirit of perfect understanding, the spirit of wise strategy, I mean, think about the strategies that we need and the strategies of wisdom that are available for us. Jesus, before he picked his 12 disciples, he even, knew, he even knew one of them had to betray him. Before he ever picked them, he knew one had to. He prayed all night. His strategy was to pray all night. And I love the story of Lazarus because he waited four days. He waited till Lazarus was good and dead. He wasn't just dead, he was good and dead. And in that culture, they believed that the spirit hung around for three days. And so the strategy was, I'm waiting till day four, waiting an extra day, so no one can say, well, the spirit just was still hanging around. No, he was gone, he was gone. And the spirit of mighty power, 
I loved how when Jesus just walked into a room, he changed the atmosphere. A blind man comes up to him and Jesus just spits on the ground, makes mud, puts it on his, and the blind man can see. The little girl's not dead. They laughed. Get out of the room. And Jesus raises this little girl from the dead. And then he heals Peter's mother-in-law. And I, I love that story because I, I always think about a friend of mine who came to me and he said, if you had the power to heal your mother-in-law and she was really sick, would you heal her? And I, I, I said, well, because my mother-in-law right now is watching this morning, absolutely I would heal my mother-in-law. I love my mother-in-law. It's really a true story. I actually liked her before I liked you. I knew them. I played basketball and soccer, and I knew her parents before I ever met Danita. But yes, Eldana, I, if I had the power, I would heal you without a doubt, all right? <laughs> I love you, all right? Um, the spirit of revelation, the spirit of revelation. He knew that the fish, certain fish would have a coin to pay the temple tax. I just love that. Now, here's the one I want to talk about this morning. It's the spirit of the fear of Yahweh. Look at verse 3, just the first part of verse 3. It says, he will find delight, he will find his delight in living by the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Let's read that one more time. He will find his delight in living by the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I think one of the reasons why I have never preached on the fear of the Lord is because I really haven't understood it. And you and I have had this running dialogue for the last 10 years about this very topic about the fear of the Lord. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Now, I like to talk in the morning, and Danita likes to ask deep theological questions late at night when I'm about to fall asleep. So we have never resolved this discussion. <laughs> I wake up talking, I wake up with questions, and she's like, really, you got that many questions? And at nighttime, when I'm just like a zombie, she's like, can we talk about deep? Th no, honey, I wanna watch Clint Eastwood shoot somebody, or I, I, I'm not ready for the theology. So we've never really resolved this discussion. And then I, I heard a sermon by, by John Bevere, and I went, that's it, I get it. Now, okay, that was a window, and I'll go through the gate, I'll, I'll charge forward. And, and I can't wait for us to talk about this tonight, this morning rather, for just a couple of minutes. The fear of the Lord. Was Jesus afraid of his father? Well, that can't be it. I remember being afraid of Mr. Layton. I was a little boy and Mr. Layton was another neighbor and he was gruff and quiet and didn't ever seem to talk. And I was afraid of Mr. Layton. And uh, one day he comes over and my dad and I are playing pitch and catch and I was trying to learn how to pitch and he was actually a pitching coach. And Mr. Layton said to me for the very first time, I'm like seven or eight years old, he said, would you like to learn how to pitch? But I was afraid of him. So it can't, it can't be that Jesus was afraid of his father. So what is the fear of the Lord? Well, first of all, let's talk about what it isn't. It can't be that I am that I, I, I'm afraid of God. It can't be that I'm hiding from God. It can't be what Adam and Eve did. It can't be they hid in the garden. It's not to be scared of God. How can you have a relationship with someone that you are afraid of? You can't have a relationship with people that you are afraid of. So the fear of the Lord is not that I'm to always be afraid of God. Sometimes I think we ask ourselves the question like, how close can I get to the line of compromise and still be okay? Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're stepping into the, to the, the arena of what it means to, to fear the Lord. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if I have this healthy respect for God, I would not have made some of the choices that I made. I would not have made some of the decisions that I made. In fact, some of the worst decisions you've ever made in your life were because you didn't fear God. And so fearing the Lord, it's not that I'm afraid to be in his presence. We just this morning came into his presence. We just worshiped in this room the presence of the Lord. So the fear of the Lord is to be terrified to be away from the Lord. That's what the fear of the Lord is. The fear of the Lord is, is that I might miss it. It's exactly what you said earlier. Now, we didn't talk about this. I get passed over because I didn't do what was right. 
I stepped outside of God's will. I quenched the spirit. I grieved the spirit. The fear of the Lord is, is you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Russian roulette with God. Maybe I can get away with this. And the story really took on meaning for me when I understood when this guy goes and sees Jim Baker, and Jim Baker was a TV evangelist, and things didn't go well for Jim Baker back in the 90s. He, he got arrested, uh, went to jail for like five or six years. And so this, this pastor goes to see Jim Baker in jail. And he, said, he said, Jim, when did you stop loving the Lord? And Jim Baker said, I never stopped loving the Lord. He said, well, yeah, you did. You stole, you cheated, you lied to the people. When did you stop loving the Lord? And Jim Baker said, I never stopped loving the Lord. I just never feared him. I never had any fear of the consequences of the Lord. I never feared that, that I might step outside of God's will and, and, and that God would then be angry with me. I, I didn't do that. And so Danita and I, have lived about 30 years more than all of you on stage. And when I was your age, I did not understand how good people in the church could make really bad decisions. I, I did not understand how all these wonderful people who came to worship, came to Sunday school, came to connect groups, how, how, how all of a sudden they would be caught embezzling or caught betraying or caught in adultery or caught stealing or caught, caught what, whatever. And it, it I get it now. You see, there's a lot of people at church who love God, but there's a lot of people at church who do not fear God. You, you must come into the, to the presence of God where I want to be in the center of the fairway of God's will for my life. I am terrified not to do everything God has in store for me. And I have a little bit of time and a little bit of money and a little bit of skill and a little bit of energy to be able to serve this king and bring the kingdom into the chaos of this world. This world's a mess. But the fear of the Lord keeps us grounded, keeps us where we need to be. Um, John Mark, read for us Psalm 19, verse 9. Read that for us if you would. Sure. Psalm 19, verse 9 says, The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. So it's pure and it lasts forever. Say that with me. Pure and lasts forever. Pure lasts forever. You see, Lucifer was in the throne room, but he didn't fear God, and it didn't last forever. Lucifer was in the throne room leading worship for Yahweh, and he didn't fear him, and it didn't last forever. There was a third of the angels that fell because of their disobedience. A third of those, those one-third angels, they were in the presence of the Father, they did not fear him, and it did not last forever. Adam and Eve walked in the presence of God, but they didn't fear him, and it did not last forever. So what does it look like? Let's unpack this just a little bit. What does it mean to fear the Lord? Well, fearing the Lord is really about obedience. And it's obeying God instantly. I have this great memory of your dad and I fishing, Danita. And we're actually bass fishing in, in Memphis. And um, we were catching bass left and right, and they were all about a half inch short, legal. And every time your dad would catch a bass about a half inch short, he would immediately throw it back. We'd measure it, he'd throw it back. Every time I caught a bass, it was about a half inch short, I'm looking at it. And I'm thinking, can I step on it? Can I feed it some minnows? I, I'm, I, can I stretch it, you know? Can I, can I put it on the racks? I, I, and I'll never forget your dad, just instant obedience. Much holier man than I am, especially when it comes to fishing. Ted, you can relate to that, that's right. They obey instantly. Obedience is obeying even when it doesn't make sense. There are times when obeying God really doesn't make any sense. There's times when obeying God hurts, and there's times when obeying God, there's not even a visible benefit. And that's what it means. That's what it means. The spirit of the fear of the Lord. God, I don't want to get out of your will. God, I want to be your tool. I want to be your priest. I want to be your son. I want to be your daughter. I want to be your man. I want to be everything I can be for you. That's the spirit of the fear 
of the Lord. And the perk then is, and John Mark, we, we read for us Psalm 25, verse 14. The perk then is friendship with the Lord is reserved for those who fear him. Psalm 25, 14 yeah. says, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. Read, read, read it one more time. The Lord confides. The, the Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. See, there's, there's churches that are full of people that love Jesus. Because they love Jesus for what he did for them. Because Jesus saved them from their sins and Jesus gave them eternal life and Jesus took away their shame. But churches are not filled with people who fear the Lord. May Harborside and all you guys watching this morning all over the world, may you be gripped by the fear of the Lord. May you not try to get so close to the line of compromise. How close can I get and still get away with this? How close can I get and still be in God's will? May we stay in the center of the fairway and fear him. The spirit of the fear of the Lord come upon us. Now, what I love about this topic, and again, I don't have it fully baked. I'll do better next time. What I love about this topic is really what Russell Wilson's daddy taught him. Russell Wilson's a quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. And the father of this great future Hall of Fame quarterback always taught his son, Russell Wilson, why not you? Why not you? Why not you? So if what John Mark just read for us, if this covenant is available and this friendship is available, why not you? Why, why wouldn't you be a friend of God? In fact, there's only two people that I can find in the whole Old Testament that are called a friend of God. One's Abraham, the other is Moses. And the reason that God called them his friends is because he could count on them. He could always count on Abraham. He could always count on Moses. And they proved it. Abraham was faithful at 75 years of age. He left his home, went to a, going to a land he'd never been to before. Can you imagine some of you selling everything that you have and just nomadically going out someplace that God says, I'm gonna, when, you, when you get there, I'll tell you. You have no clue where God's leading you. Abraham had that kind of faith. And then he took his son. You know the whole story with Isaac. But here's how we know he was a friend. God actually negotiated with Abraham. He comes to Abraham and says, you know what? If I'm going to destroy these cities, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah and two others. And he says, and Abraham goes, wait, 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 wait a minute, God. If there are 50 righteous people, will you destroy the cities for 50? And God says, well, okay, no, I'll do it if there's 45. And he said, well, if there's 45 righteous people, and uh, no, if there's 40. And, and Abraham gets God down to 10. Yep. <laughs> this is incredible. God and Abraham are talking as friends. God is consulting Abraham. He's consulting his friend. I want to be like that. We want to be like that. Our church wants to be like that. We want to have this incredible relationship with our Heavenly Father that he can always count on you and he can always count on me. You see, Abraham knew God and God knew Abraham. And the other one was Moses. The Bible says that Israel knew his Acts, but Moses knew God's ways. Big difference. Israel knew about God. Moses knew God and had this incredible relationship. And so look at verse 2 again. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Because this is for you. This is what every single one, why not you? Why not you? Why not me? Why not Harborside? Why not all our children? Why not all our middle schoolers? Why not all our high schoolers? Why not all our young adults? Why not all the people who get married in our chapel? Why not us? Because here's what he's come to embrace and to immerse us with. The spirit of Yahweh has come to rest upon you. And at your baptism, when you got saved and you gave your life to Christ, Jesus Christ's spirit has come to live in you. And so the spirit of Yahweh wants to rest on you 24-7. He wants to give you extraordinary wisdom. This world is a mess. We all need the wisdom to bring the kingdom into the chaos. 
Every one of us, as sons and daughters, are to bring the kingdom of God to the chaos of this world. You have the privilege and you have the power because you have the spirit of Yahweh resting on you to bring the kingdom into a chaotic family, into a chaotic neighborhood, into a chaotic work environment. On your own, you're dead meat. With his presence in you and on you, nothing is impossible with God. And so the spirit of Yahweh has come to rest on you. And the spirit of extraordinary wisdom has come to rest on you. And the spirit of perfect understanding. Lord, I don't understand this scripture. I don't understand how this applies to my life. The spirit of perfect understanding. And wise strategy. I've said this for years. You business women and you business men, you have an unfair advantage over everybody else in the boardroom. He gives you wise strategies. He gives you strategy on what to do in your home with a child or an aging parent. The spirit of wise strategy and the spirit of mighty power. Oh my goodness. I, I'm not kidding you. When, when you cranked into that all hail King Jesus, I had a bolt of the Holy Spirit shot right through me, man. There, there is a spirit of mighty power. You have the opportunity to go into every environment of your, of your world and change that environment because the spirit dwells and lives inside of you. And the spirit of revelation, he will tell you what to do. One of my favorite songs is the song that you guys wrote and you sing, if I'm honest, I won't sing it, but if I'm honest, I don't know what to do. I love that song. And I love how that song is so real because there's revelation and he reveals to you what to do. And maybe some of you don't know what to do right now. The world's a mess. But we have a Messiah who gave, who gave you that spirit of revelation. And then I just love this. There's a spirit of the fear of the Lord. So God put on Jesus a spirit of fear of the Lord. Jesus was not afraid of the Father. Jesus is God. How could God be afraid of God? Jesus was so concerned to always be in the Father's will. That's the point. That's the spirit of the fear of the Lord. You hunger to be in God's will. You hunger to know God's plan. You hunger to be a child, a son, a daughter of the king. That's the spirit of the fear of the Lord. And remember what Jesus said? I'm only going to say what I hear my father say. I'm only going to do what I hear my father, my father does. And everything that Jesus did, he was honoring the father. And then what did the spirit do? The spirit was always glorifying the father and the son. What an incredible relationship these guys had. So let me ask you a couple questions. Do you love God? Probably, or you wouldn't be watching this morning. Probably, or you wouldn't be singing some worship songs. Most likely, or you wouldn't have taken communion a few minutes ago. There might be a few of you this morning watching that, that don't love Jesus, just keep watching. We're so honored that you're watching. We're thrilled that you're here. Just keep asking all the right questions. But see, a lot of Christians love God. But the real perk, the real benefit is, do I fear God? Do I want to be in the center of the fairway of God's will all the days of my life? So let me ask you this question. Do you do you fear God? That's more than loving God. Loving God's great. You get fire insurance. You get saved. That's what you do when you love God. He, he's so honored that you loved him. He does all these things for you. But now your perk, now your privilege is to be his son and daughter. Why not you? Why not allow God to use you to change this chaotic world? Why not allow God to use you and me and our entire church and our listening audience this morning to change the world? Why not you? Why not me? Well, I know as, as elders and staff of this church, we are absolutely committed to the spirit of the fear of the Lord. We're absolutely committed to 
not just love him, which is a perk, a privilege, but to serve him, to obey him, not to play games, not to do the Russian roulette. How far can I stray? How far can I get away from the will of God and still be okay with the heavenly father? No, 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 no. I'm terrified not to do and be and say everything he's called us to say and do and be. So we never can do this because we are so densely populated, but I'd like to close today's service bowing. We've got room this morning to bow. And I would like to ask those of you at home, if you will bow with us also this morning. And you will bow because, Lord, I've, I've loved you for 40 years, but I've never really thought about this topic this morning. And maybe that's my fault because I've never taught it before. But, but now we are. Now we're in it. And, and so where's the confession? Where's the repentance? Lord, if I'm honest, I've strayed. Lord, if I'm honest, I've played games. Lord, if I'm honest, I've just kind of, but, but from this point on, I am terrified not to be and do everything you've called us to do. So let's bow right now. Danita, I'm gonna ask you if you would to, to close the service. And uh, if you would, let's bow before the King of Kings and just confess him in our spirit of fear. Oh, Father, we come before you and we worship you. Yours is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. And you will not share your glory or yield your glory to another. And Lord, we're just reminded at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. And so we bow before you. And we confess that we have loved you, but we haven't always feared you. Cleanse us, Father, and forgive us of that. Father, we, we rejoice because the same spirit that you rested, you allowed to rest on Jesus, is available to us. And we, we worship you. And thank you, Holy Spirit, of wisdom that you rest on us, of understanding. Come rest on us. Counsel and power, come rest on us, Holy Spirit. Knowledge and fear of the Lord. Come rest on us, O oh Lord. Empower us, pour out your grace on us to fear you more. We, we cry for wisdom, and your word says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Help us to fear you, Father. We worship you, King of kings and Lord of lords. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Oh, I fear the Lord. I fear the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, we just want to again say three services in here next week, the Father's Day, three services at the same exact times in the chapel, 8 30, 10. 11.30 next week. That's right. And you can also join us online at 5 p.m. We are starting an online service at 5 p.m. This isn't just for next week. This is until. So you can tune in at 5 p.m. for our online worship experience. Thank you for your generosity. It's because of you that we're able to do this. It's because of you that we're able to serve God so faithfully. And so thank you for opening the door to letting us do that. And you can continue to do that by giving online. And there's a link coming into the chat right now. And you can click that link to give your gift online. And also, you can mail in your gift. Many of you are continuing to do that, and that's great. You can send your gift to 2200 Marshall Street in Safety Harbor, Florida. 
Thanks for joining us this morning for service. Don't go anywhere quite yet. If you missed the video before, there's a video that will play right now, giving you some practical things we're doing to prepare this building. So go ahead and watch this video. Hello and welcome to Harborside. I am so excited to take you on a tour of our building. We are gearing up and getting ready to reopen the doors on June 21st. We're calling this Sunday the Father's Day. We're going to have services here on campus at 8.30, 10, and 11.30 a.m. And at 5 p.m., we are going to live premiere our online service. I cannot wait to see you guys then. So let's get started on our tour. As you walk in the doors, you're going to be greeted with some bright smiles. Our greeters are going to have on white gloves and they are ready to assist you in whatever way possible. Welcome to our Surfside Kids environment. Parents, we want to make this check-in process as easy and as efficient as the drive through at Chick-fil-A is. So when you walk in, we are going to have volunteers stationed with a portable check-in. There you will have a hands-free check-in experience you can then walk your kids to their classrooms where they will learn their Bible story for the day and they will worship with their class. Kylie, are you ready? I'm so excited for June 21st! Woo! Middle school parents, you are going to have a similar check-in process to what's happening downstairs with Surfside Kids. Steven, this room is so empty and open. What's going to be going on June 21st? We're going to have to be here to find out. Guys, the best news yet is that on June 21st, we are going to have free hot coffee for all of our services. Can I get one hot coffee, please? Thank you, Kurt. Let's head into the auditorium to see what's happening in there. Hey, this is going on in here. Well, we've got communion and we've got offering. Hey, notice we've got the communion cups socially distanced about six inches apart. Huh? How about that? You pick up your communion right here and you can drop your offering bang, or you can give online or mail it in. You can still do that. As you can see, our staff has been working so hard to physically get the building ready for when we all come back again on June 24th. They've also spiritually been preparing this place. Praying, pressing in to what the Lord has for us. So we can't wait to see you June 21st, the Father's Day.